Hey guys, Justin with Kayak Catfish. I'm out here on Watts Bar today and I'm going to be doing a different technique for catfish than what you've seen in my videos before. In fact, this is going to be the first time that I've ever tried this, so it may be a complete failure. I don't know. We'll have to try it out and see. But what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be vertical jigging for flatheads. Now, my reasoning for wanting to do this is there's been times in the past where using my normal techniques, I've got my bait snagged, I just got hung on bottom, and as I've been trying to pop it loose, trying to work it free, I've had flatheads take the bait. That's happened to me, that's happened to a few other people I know. So I've kind of been trying to think in my mind here, how can I replicate that? And what I've come up with in my mind, and who knows, this may be something that other people are already doing, I don't know, but I'm just gonna be vertical jigging for them. And what I've got here, this is just a three quarter ounce jig head. This is a hoagie barbarian jig head. Uh, it's got these super strong hooks on here. Eric Harrison, who is a well-known, well-respected striper fisherman up in Boston, catches just monster stripers. He uses these things all the time with his soft plastics that he fishes with. I figure if they'll hold up to them huge strippers he catches, they'll hold up to the flatheads that I will hopefully catch. So uh, that's the jig head I'm going to be using. I've already been over here along the shoreline. I've got some live bluegill that I'm going to put on here. And uh, I've just got a, about a three foot section here, a 50 pound big game monofilament. That's just for abrasion resistance because I'm going to be down on all these obstructions here and rocks and all that. So. Assuming a fish takes the bait, I just want to make sure I've got a little extra abrasion resistance versus the braid from my main line. As far as my rod goes, uh, I've just got a seven foot medium heavy rod. This is the rod I won in the last Yak Tribe tournament, this uh, the Leviathan rod. And, uh, you know, I don't know, like I said, I don't know if this technique is going to work. Uh, I think it has potential. Uh, the ledge I'm going to be fishing today, it's rocks, it's just full of obstructions, trees, rocks boulders down there, I mean just everything. There's all kinds of nooks and crannies for these fish to hide in. So we're just going to work our way down the sledge. I'm like I said, I'm going to have live blue, I'm going to start with live bluegill on here anyway. I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, if it doesn't work out, then we'll cut them up in pieces, but we're just going to make our way down the sledge, vertical jigging, dropping it down, and all those little hidey holes that the flatheads could be in. And hopefully we're going to get on some fish today. This may be a complete dud, but you know what, either way, maybe we'll all learn something from this. You all may learn from my failures or my successes if it works out and be able to apply it to what something that you're already doing. And you all out there watching, you may already be doing a technique like this or this exact technique and you all may be able to give me some feedback on what I'm doing wrong or give me some ideas on how I can improve this. So we'll go out here and give it a shot and see how it goes. But just to hedge my bets, I've also got a couple other rods with me here. I'm just going to have a, a couple more live bluegill suspended off the back of my kayak while I do this, just so we don't get skunked today. There's a fish. Oh, right there. He's a little one, but you know what? This tactic works. Just a little guy, but hey, this tactic works. That's the main thing. I didn't get skunked doing it. <laughs> Let's let him go. All I'm doing is just taking this bluegill and I'm basically taking the jig head. I don't know that it matters if you hook them through the top or through the bottom, but I'm just going through their belly. And get them scales off the end of the hook like you would. Just like if he was fishing normally. And I'm just going to drop it down to the bottom. Alright, so now my jig's on bottom. I've let it drop down. And now I'm just kind of... So as I drift along, I don't have any current out here today. But the wind is kind of just a light breeze and it's just enough to move the kayak down this ledge. And I'm just slowly lifting my rod tip. Every time I feel it hit bottom, just give it a little pop. Just pop it up, let it slowly go back down. Up and down. And what I'm doing is, I, at least my thought process on this is, is as I make my way down this ledge, my jig is falling down in the rocks and boulders and trees and all the other debris down there on bottom and all those little flathead hidey hole places and i'm hoping that this technique is kind of going to be a situation where it's definitely not a finesse technique it's basically i'm down there knocking on the flatheads layer of the front door and just saying hey come out and play and here's dinner and so hopefully we're going to get into some got that one blue cat so 
the day's not a complete loss. Plus, I do still have my other rods back here too with um, suspended live bluegill here behind me. So we'll just keep making our way down this ledge and see what we find. Fish on. Fish on. Thumped it. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Man, I've got two fish on, guys. All right, guys, we got him. He ain't the biggest flathead in the world, but we got what we came here for. Get down there, jigging in these rocks and stumps and trees, right where these flatheads live. It's working out. I think there's some use for this technique. Let's let him go and reel in this other one over here. Fish right here's got a little pull to him. He may not be a bad fish, especially considering he's been sitting here a few minutes while I reeled in the other one. He's just been tugging on this rod and wearing himself out while I've been fighting the, that flathead. There, there's just another flathead, guys. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, back to back flatheads. Neither one of them very big, as you can see here, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Get two in a row back to back like that. Got one there vertical jigging and had this other one just on, you know, a live bluegill suspended back here, like one of my regular setups. So, <laughs> pretty cool. Check that out. It's a beautiful fish. Let's let him go. There he goes. Let's do that again. Fish on right there. Let's put the jigging rod up. Grab this one. This is a little dink blue cat. He apparently didn't get the memo. We're not out here for him today. <laughs> Let's let him go and get back to what we were doing. There's one. Let it go. He let it go. <laughs> Man, it sure is fun when they hit it though. Aren't y'all so my arm's tired, I ain't gonna lie. When the way I was originally hooking these bluegill kind of sideways as I would jig them up, it's surprisingly a lot of resistance as I was doing it. So what I'm going to now is I'm going to cut them and I'm just gonna run this hook right through their mouth just kind of leave them on there like that I don't know if that'll do any good or not but like I said I know I sound like a pansy right now but my arm's tired <laughs> oh, guys got one on got one on right there I tell you what guys this technique is tiresome to do but boy when they hit it it is fun Oh yeah, that's another flathead. Heck yeah, buddy. All right, guys, there we go. Flathead number three on the day. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty thing. We haven't found no big flatheads yet, but you know what? That's number three on the day. Two of them vertical jigging, so. I thought the first, tag, the first time I caught that one vertical jigging could be a fluke or something, just accident, but two of them now I think this is gonna work out that flathead there that I just got I got on the cut bluegill so I'm gonna do this one the exact same way just gonna run that hook right through its mouth and it's come out like that so I don't know it's not pretty but it worked on the last one let's see if it'll work again there's a fish buddy he nailed it Oh, buddy, you nailed it. <laughs> I mean, you just feel bump. <laughs> All I've been doing today, guys, is just working up and down this ledge, back and forth on it. I don't really have much current out here. If it's moving the kayak at all, it's just, it's negligible. I have had a little bit of a wind out here today that's kind of just moved me, and I've just basically used this. It's been a light breeze. I've been moving 0.2 
miles per hour at the most maybe today. And uh one hitting that well back there too. But I mean it's it's working. I mean it's it's so I don't know how to explain it really, it's just it's rewarding when you take an idea that's in your mind and you go out to the water and and you have success with it. And it's just it's a good feeling. You know, this is something that you can't call one day success on one day, uh, you know, a consistent pattern. You know, it could be anything, but I'm encouraged enough and I've had enough fun doing this today that I'm definitely going to be doing this again. Definitely. Oh, that's a good flathead, guys. That's a good flathead. Let's see if we can get him in now. Oh, here we go, guys. Look at that, buddy. <laughs> Heck. Yes. Vertical jigging. I was using the cut bluegill again. The live bluegill, it's just creating too much drag. I, I know it sounds crazy to think that a little bluegill on a jig could create drag, but when you're lifting constantly up and down with the jig, it does get tiresome doing that. But I put the cut bluegill on there and just ran the jig right through its mouth, the hook right up and out the back, and worked out well. It's not nearly as tiresome. <laughs> that right there all right guys it's awesome a fish as this is I'd love to stay here and look at him a little longer but I'm gonna let him go get back down there go get bigger awesome <laughs> all right y'all my fishing time is up so I gotta get on out of here but you know what it was a great day to me I mean I certainly didn't set no records with the size of the fish I was catching but for me to catch four flatheads in one day that's that's a dang good day and uh, you know really the, the whole vertical jigging thing it outfished my back two rods that I had that with the suspended baits I think I got I got one flathead and a blue cat on the suspended rods and then the other flatheads and the other blue cats came on the vertical jigging so I'm uh, pretty impressed with the results but uh, I tell you what and I'm gonna sound like a sissy when I say this I'm gonna be sore tomorrow my wrist and my elbow from jigging all afternoon here and I really haven't even been out here that long. I've been out here about four hours today. I'm going to feel it tomorrow. It gives me a whole new respect for those guys who, who bump for catfish. And really, you know, this technique, this vertical jigging, it's not much different than bumping. Uh, you know, if, if you're not familiar with bumping, what it is is basically those guys are slowing themselves down with the current so that their boat is moving at a slower speed than what the current is and they're letting their bait get in front of them and they're just bumping it off the bottom this as soon as it hits bottom they raise it up and they just let it go down in front of the boat like that now I've never tried bumping personally out here on the section of the river that I fish we just don't have the current for it our current flows uh, they're just not it's just not strong enough to, for me to bump but uh, you know the whole vertical jigging concept it's not that much different the only thing that's really different with bumping instead of my bait being out in front of me and vertical jigging it's just dry, directly into the kayak so um, very encouraged by this this is definitely something I'm going to be doing again um, I'm already going to my mind the places that it's going to be effective I knew the area I fished today I knew it had a good potential for me to catch some flatheads just because I've caught them here in the past I've caught some really good flatheads here before um, but I certainly didn't expect to come out here and get the amount of flatheads that I got I mean that's just that's just something that I don't do you know I don't normally target flatheads but uh, to get to get four in a day it's that's a dang good day for me but uh, yeah uh, you know if you all I, I certainly don't think I'm the first person to ever do this I'm not saying that by any stretch and I don't claim to be an expert after one day so I would love to hear from those of you who have been doing this technique or if any of you all maybe have some other suggestions after watching me to give me some ideas on things that I could do better uh, you know, initially when I started out here today, I was using the live bluegill on the jig heads. And I wanted the live bluegill because when I was jigging down through here, I wanted that bluegill down there kicking, putting off that vibration uh, to give me a little something extra on it. Uh, it just, I don't know, maybe I should hook them a different way. I don't know. It was just creating too much drag. I mean, it was really tiresome. As sissy as that sounds, I know. But, uh, you know, once I switched over and cut the bluegill and just ran the hook through their mouth and out through the top of their back 
it really helped decrease a lot of the drag that I was getting and uh, made it a lot more uh, less tiresome to do the technique so and you know and I caught some fish with there with the cut bluegill too so uh, encouraged by that but uh, yeah anyway guys I gotta get on out of here hope you like the video hope you learned something from it I hope you'll share your information with me so I can learn something from you thanks for watching I'll see you next time